Fox 61 News at 10 starts now. It's just horrific. I can't believe families have to go through this. Right now at 10, Connecticut prepares to pay respects to the two Bristol officers killed last week. Tonight, what you need to know about their funeral and how one restaurant's helping their families. Also, a warning for parents tonight about a spike in respiratory illnesses in kids across the state. How Connecticut Children's Medical Center is managing all these cases. And at a debate in possibly the tightest congressional race in Connecticut. We'll tell you what happened tonight between Congresswoman Johanna Hayes and George Logan. But we do begin tonight as 50,000 people are expected to show up at Rentschler Field tomorrow to pay their respects to Lieutenant Dustin DeMonte and Char Sergeant Alex Hamsey. Good evening, I'm Ben Goldman. And I'm Jen Bernstein. Thank you for joining us. The stadium in East Hartford is hosting a joint funeral for the officers and the service begins tomorrow morning at 11. Fox 61's Brooke Griffin live in studio tonight to tell us how the funeral could affect your morning commute. Brooke? Well, there will be two processions to the field beginning before 9 o'clock tomorrow morning, one coming from North Haven and the other from Bristol. Both are expected to arrive at Rinchler Field around 10 o'clock for the 11 a.m. joint funeral. Lieutenant DeMonte's procession will start at the North Haven Funeral Home on Washington Avenue, go up I-91, exit on 691 West to 84 East, where they'll get off on the stadium exit 58. Now, after the funeral, they'll proceed back to North Haven Funeral Home. Sergeant Hamsey's procession will begin at the Scott Funeral Home in Bristol following Route 6 to Colt Highway. They will also take 84 East and get off on Exit 58. They will go back to the Scott Funeral Home immediately after the service. State police are warning people that traffic will be backed up in East Hartford from Silver Lane to Main Street all the way to the Manchester border starting at 730 and lasting through at least mid-afternoon. So so if your travels take you through that area, be, you are being encouraged to plan accordingly. Leave extra time to get where you're going or just take a different route. Now also to note, in an effort to relieve some of the backup from those two processions, Bristol and North Haven schools are closed tomorrow for all teachers and students. Now coming up at 11, I'll have what you need to know if you're attending the funeral, everything from where to park and what you can and cannot bring inside. Brooke Griffin, Foxy 61 News. All right, Brooke, thank you. And new at 10, a small restaurant in Woolkid made some changes to their weekly Thursday night dinner to honor Lieutenant DeMonte and Sergeant Hamsey. The family-owned spot is raising money for the families of both of those officers. Fox 61's Carmen Chow joins us live by the Bristol Police Department to tell us how it all went. Carmen. Ben and Jen, it's not just this memorial in front of the police department where people are showing their support. That support has extended throughout the state within a very small Italian restaurant. It's just horrific. I can't believe families have to go through this. Doreen Zukowska is overcome with emotion. She knew she had to do something as soon as she heard the news last week. For more than eight years, her Wolcott business, La Fortuna Restaurant, has held a weekly Thursday night dinner. Each week, money from the pre-ordered dinners goes to support a different cause. This week, it is for the families of the two fallen Bristol police officers. This is probably the only thing we can do to help, you know, to help the families out. Over 200 orders were placed. Placed. And one by one, cars showed up to the back parking lot picking yep. up their dinners. Yep. Each dinner cost $12, and 20% of the sales would go directly to the Bristol Police Heroes Fund. There was also a jar for anyone who wanted to make additional donations. Of all the things we do in the restaurant here, Thursday nights are my favorite thing to do to be able to give back, and this is one of the greatest ones we've ever done. A Wolkett mom told Fox 61 she and her family rarely eat out since money is tight, but she knew supporting this cause was a no-brainer, especially since her cousin is also a police officer. Still sad. Being a mom, I just wish her the best, and I know how hard it is to be pregnant and now to be alone. For others who do not have a law enforcement connection, this dinner means more than putting food in their stomachs. It is to send a message of condolences. It's just a terrible thing to happen. Um, they put their lives on the line every day. They go to work. They just want to come home from work. The only thing you could do is come together as a community. 
Now, the La Fortuna restaurant is known for their generous acts in the community. Their next biggest event will be this upcoming Christmas, where they will close down the restaurant to invite the homeless over for a hot meal. I'm live in Bristol. Carmen Chow, Fox 61 News. All right, Carmen, thank you. And Fox 61 will have live coverage of tomorrow morning's funeral services at Rensselaer Field. You can watch live beginning at 11 a.m. right here on Fox 61. And you can also stream the funeral services live on fox61.com, the Fox 61 app, and on Fox 61 Plus. Moving along here tonight, let's get a check on the forecast with Chief Meteorologist Rachel Frank. Hi, Rachel. I'm still trying to warm up after going outside to grab dinner. This is from Jeff Aborn in Staffordville. This was actually this morning starting off the day with a thin layer of frost on the car, needing to warm it up or scrape the windshield before getting your day started. Some areas had frost this morning. Others did not. If you saw it this morning, you can plan on seeing it again heading into tomorrow morning. Temperatures are already dropping quickly into the upper 30s in Torrington. Right Right around 50 degrees in Chester areas of patchy frost inland, but not expected to see frost along the Connecticut shoreline. The wind is starting to calm down a lot inland, but it's still quite breezy along the shoreline with sustained winds, which means consistent winds anywhere between 10 to 20 miles per hour out of the south. But those winds will continue to diminish tonight and it's not as windy tomorrow, which will go a long way to helping to make it feel more comfortable outside. Low temperatures tonight in the low to mid 30s inland, low to mid 40s for the Connecticut shoreline by lunchtime tomorrow with bright sunshine. Temperatures will be between 55 to 60 and we'll see high temperatures in the low 60s as we head through the afternoon. So grab some sunglasses, a fall jacket on your way out the door and you might be able to ditch it in the afternoon with high temperatures climbing into the low 60s. And even though that's only a few degrees warmer than today, again, without the wind, I think that's going to make a big difference to making it feel more comfortable. And then it turns downright warm heading into your Saturday. Day, but Sunday we have more clouds and there could be some rain to finish the day. We'll explain coming up. Rachel, thank you. New at 10 tonight, a busy road in Norwich closed today after a pickup truck got stuck in a trench on New London Turnpike. Yantic firefighters say it happened around 2.30 this afternoon, right near the on and off ramps for Route 2. The area had been coned off and traffic was reduced to one lane before it happened. The pickup was resting on a high pressure gas line, but no leak occurred and no injuries were reported. Uh, a very important and alarming health alert tonight for parents. Connecticut Children's Medical Center is dealing with a spike in kids in the hospital with respiratory illnesses. A spokesperson says the hospital is over capacity with kids in temporary units waiting for beds in the emergency department. The physician in chief for Connecticut Children says illnesses like RSV are appearing much earlier in the season than usual. What's different now is that RSV has surfaced in very large numbers at the wrong time. Uh, historically, RSV in children occurs in the Northern Hemisphere in the U.S., certainly in the months of uh, February, March, April, so late winter, early spring, with fluctuations. You know, it could be early winter, midwinter. Uh, but rarely, if ever, do we see this level of RSV in late summer, early fall. Now, Connecticut Children's is working with FEMA and the National Guard on plans to possibly set up an outdoor tent to handle the rise in patients. Well, we are less than three weeks away from election night and this evening a debate in a hotly contested congressional race here in Connecticut. We're talking about our state's fifth district, which includes Waterbury, Danbury and many parts of northwestern Connecticut. Democratic Congresswoman Johanna Hayes and Republican challenger George Logan faced off for the second time this week. Yeah, Fox 61's Emma Wolfhorst was at tonight's debate at Central Connecticut State University. She joins us there live to tell us how it went. Emma. Yeah, Jen, Ben, both candidates lively and energetic, lots of back and forth, and the crowd tonight equally as raucous. Lots of loud applause on both sides, a Logan chant even breaking out after the debate ended. Now, at the start of the night, we began with some heavy hitters, social issues. The first topic for both candidates, abortion. Representative Hayes says unequivocally she'll support codifying Roe versus Wade into federal law. Logan, though, disagrees. He says he supports a woman's right to choose and Connecticut state law, but he thinks the U.S. Supreme Court was right in overturning Roe. On those other big issues like inflation and the economy, lots of passing the blame around. Logan pointing to Democrat one-party rule and the current administration. Hayes, though, says it's the Republican minority who are stopping legislation from getting passed. 
But everything that the Biden-Harris administration has touched has gone sideways, has been worse. Just about everyone in the 5th Congressional District is worse off. We need a change. One party rule is not working for the people of the 5th Congressional District. You don't hear him talking anything about what he did in the State Senate because he did nothing. If he had voted on these issues in a way that he was proud of, in a way that affected change and brought about meaningful progress, he would be up here shouting it from the rooftops. He is not. Now, Fox 61 was the only television station in there tonight to talk with both these candidates one on one post debate coming up. I'll bring you more on how each of these candidates feel they did tonight. For now, live in New Britain, Emma Wolforst, Fox 61 News. All right, Emma, thank you. And Fox 61 is your home for next month's midterm elections in Connecticut. Text the word vote to the phone number on your screen, 860-527-6161, and we'll send you back a link with our Fox 61 voter guide. It has all the races taking place, plus important information you need to know if you're planning to cast your ballot on Election Day. We have much